Meng Huaishuan, the crown prince of the Marquis Mansion and the top scorer of the new imperial examination, was chased and fell into a cliff the once proud son of heaven has become a disabled person sitting in a wheelchair. Unfortunately, at this moment, the Jinling Jiang family carried their daughter to Yangzhou in a sedan chair. Meng Huaishuan is blind and disabled, who would be willing to marry a useless person. I heard Miss Jiang is arrogant and domineering, she must not be able to endure hardship. How many people in the capital are waiting to see a joke? But no one noticed that the bride in the sedan chair had already been replaced by a different person and was still laughing uncontrollably. Marrying your own male god instead. Is there any other good thing in the world? Sweet love finally turns to me. Jun Chi Chi clenched his fist. Meng Lang. I'm here to play with you as a friend. Sweet text, the sweetest in history. Unsweet author comes out to be scolded. Novel keyword. Sweet. The strange beauty has spoiled the sick prince without a pop dot up window, sweet. Whaley Marin spoils the sick and weak prince by flipping through the complete TXT download, sweet. The strange power beauty dotes on the sickly crown prince and reads the latest chapter. Chapter 1 Pies Falling from the Sky You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 1 Pies Falling from the Sky Fireworks in March, Warm Spring Flowers Bloom A large red sedan chair was walking on the official road, with a newlywed woman clasping her hands together and reciting words. Buddha, Buddha, there is a saying that as long as one has deep skills, an iron pestle can be ground into a needle. Ah, uh, no, no, no. The new lady suddenly covered her face with both hands, looking shy. The bride took a deep breath, clasped her hands together again, and her voice became even more devout. Buddha, Buddha, there is a saying that the mother is as poisonous as a scorpion, and the man's heart is as iron. Ah bah, it's a mess. The bride lost patience and pulled off the hood, crossed her legs, and trembled. It is said that a strong woman is afraid of three teasing, and a good man is afraid of three entanglements, she said, Buddha's bald old man, listen to me. If I can't sleep this time, Meng Lang will take off your brain shell and kick it as a ball. Ha! Huh. Why is this sedan chair shaking? The maid Jiang Bai thought her young lady was crying out in sadness and quickly comforted her. Miss, after all, Lord Meng is the top scorer in the new imperial examination and a high dot ranking official. I believe. I believe Miss will not suffer too much. As soon as Jiang Bai finished speaking, the sedan chair trembled even more violently. She could only lower her voice and say, Miss, the master said that as long as you get the account book, you will immediately withdraw. Miss, don't be sad anymore, be careful not to cry and damage your body. Sad. Where is the bride in the sedan chair crying bitterly? It was clear that he was extremely happy, trembling with excitement, and even the corners of his mouth were almost grinning behind his ears. Mm, -hmm, I know. I understand. The bride perfunctorily said a few words and almost burst out laughing. Gu Laozi, marry Meng Huaishuan. Is there anything more exciting in this world than marrying one's own male god? Meng Huaishuan, the crown prince of the Marquis Mansion, is currently the accompanying scholar of the Holy Emperor. He is also the top scorer in this year's new imperial examination and the imperial envoy holding the Shangfang sword. Not only does he have good knowledge and good character, but he also looks like a jade tree facing the wind, graceful and charming, like a banished immortal in the sky, captivating people. He is the dream lover of a wealthy lady in the entire capital city, the dream son. In law of a high. ranking official, and the popular rival of men in the capital city. Thinking of her, Jun Chi Chi has lived for 19 years. He has never seen a man who is big or small tall or short, fat or thin. Unfortunately, when we first met at the entrance of Lingshan Temple, we missed Meng Lang for life. She had feelings for Meng Huaishuan when she saw her face, ah no, it's love at first sight. I made a wish before Buddha that I would never marry anyone in this lifetime. 
Unfortunately, she has a thief's heart and no thief's courage. The cat has been in the capital for so long, and even Meng Huishuan's hand has not been touched. I heard that Meng Huishuan fell off a cliff and was injured while investigating the case. You couldn't even eat your meal, so you headed straight to Yangzhou. You were worried about how to come and find someone. Coincidentally, I ran into the Jiang family's flower sedan on the way. The Jinlingjiang family, a salt merchant giant crocodile, and the ancestors of the Mengjiang family once made a marriage agreement. Miss Jiang Sijin was supposed to marry into the Marquis's mansion last year, but Meng Huishuan was ordered to investigate the case of salt tax corruption in Yangzhou, which delayed the marriage. Now I heard that Meng Huishuan was injured, and the Jiang family brought their daughter over with a sedan chair, but I don't know what their intentions were. However, no matter what idea you make, it's a 7-7 discount for you. In the bridal sedan chair, the bride extended her slender fingers and took out a human skin mask from her arms, covering her face with a thin layer. In the blink of an eye, the originally playful and agile girl in the mountains and fields changed her appearance. Quiet and peaceful, every frown and smile is like a lady from a wealthy family. I don't know what came to my mind, but the bride behind the veil rolled her eyes, revealing a hint of shyness. As soon as I entered Yangzhou city, a light rain began to fall in the air. Jiang Bai urged the sedan bearers to hurry up and took out Meng Huishuan's address. Wudong Alley goes to the end, and the courtyard is under the green willow tree. What kind of ghost place is this? Meng Huishuan is a high dot ranking imperial envoy and a young master of the Marquis's mansion. How could he live in a large courtyard? As the rain grew heavier and heavier, Jiang Bai didn't have time to think much and could only ask the sedan chair driver to leave quickly. This time, the Jiang family did not make any noise about their marriage, and even the sedan bearers were hired temporarily. Although these sedan bearers dare not offend the Jiang family, they have heard some of them. Miss Jiang from the Jiang family had a big fight with Mr. Jiang before getting married. Her daughter's marriage was so shabby, so I believe the Jiang family didn't attach much importance to her. Moreover, it is said that the imperial envoy Miss Jiang is going to marry has already the rain grew heavier and heavier, and they were too lazy to wait. They simply watched the dishes and left the sedan chair at the entrance of the alley. Jiang Bai was so angry that she scolded them from top to bottom, even the 18th generation of her ancestors. Chung. Why haven't you moved? Jun Chi Chi in the sedan chair held on to the elegant demeanor of a wealthy lady and spoke in standard Mandarin. She had been so anxious that she couldn't stay any longer as she watched the sedan stand still for a long time, wishing she could come out and grab her skirt and run over. Miss, the sedan chair man ran away, and it was raining. The alley was full of mud and water. Jiang Bai couldn't help complaining, what a broken place this is, so is the Meng family. The master had written to inform him before Ming Dynasty, and now there is no one to pick up. As soon as Jiang Bai finished speaking, she regretted it. Her own young lady was already very arrogant, how could she add fuel to the fire? She pondered and comforted, Miss, although it is said that getting married on rainy days is not enough. You're talking nonsense. Don't talk nonsense. Finally, there was movement in the sedan chair, and the bride's voice was both angry and eager with joy. What's the point of getting married on a rainy day? It's clear that God is so excited and tearful about our beautiful love. Jiang Bai. Miss, isn't she unwilling to marry and it seems like even her personality has changed. If I had encountered this before, I was afraid the young lady would have started cursing people long ago. It's really a bit strange. What are you still doing in a daze? June chuckled seven times, pinching the tone of the young lady's voice. Why don't you go call someone? If Meng Lang didn't come to lift my hat today, I'll ask you. Listening to this haughty and domineering tone, Jiang Bai snorted coldly, and sure enough, she was still the arrogant and domineering Miss Jiang from before. Spring in Jiangnan has always been misty and rainy, but it has always been silent with scattered rain. 
It is rare to see heavy rain like today. Raindrops fall on the bluestone slab, like pearls in a tray, with a clear and melodious sound. Toward dusk, smoke curled up from cooking in Woodone Lane, and the children playing with water had long been carried home by their parents, leaving only a few yellow dogs lying under the trees to hide from the rain. A young man in the shape of a scholar, holding an oil paper umbrella, stepped over a bluestone slab. Hurriedly passing through the big willow tree, passing through the dark vermilion courtyard door, bypassing the shadow wall, and burying oneself in running towards the inner room. Before I could even put down my umbrella, I shouted at the people inside. Sir, the Jiang family's sedan chair has arrived at the entrance of the alley. On the wooden wheelchair in the center of the room, there sat a man dressed in black clothes. He fumbled for a while and struggled to operate the wheelchair, turning himself around. The man has a thin figure, a pale complexion, a weak expression, but a calm and resolute temperament. Just above Jun Ting's nose bridge, the pitch-black pupils were lifeless like stagnant water. This Jiang family is really a bald flea. It's obvious that they didn't deliver it sooner or later, but unfortunately, they brought someone here at this time. I must have known that the adult had an account book in his hand, so I was eager to send Jiang Sijin over. The Jiang family has a close relationship with Gaohang, the salt government, and must be closely related to the salt tax corruption case. The young scholar shook off the rain from his body and crawled in. Unexpectedly, before taking a few steps, a young man suddenly fell from the beam, dressed in black, with a long sword on his waist and a face full of words, do not approach strangers. End of this chapter. Chapter 2. Don't let your touch be wrong. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 2. Don't let your touch be wrong. The young man held a long sword in front of him and said, Song Zhu, your high fever has just subsided. Don't let the cold pass. Song Zhu. That young scholar was Meng Huishuan's book boy Song Zhu. He glanced at the young man and said, Little Mohan, I have to call him Song Zhu. I am two years and six months older than you. Although he muttered, Song Zhu stopped moving forward and instead took a few steps back. When he looked up again, the young swordsman who had just wielded the sword had long disappeared. Song Zhu glanced up at the beam of the room and said, Stinky kid, you're flying so fast. Meng Huishuan, who was in a wheelchair, also had a slight smile on his lips. On the day he fell off the cliff, Emo Han fell victim to the enemy's plan to lure the tiger away from the mountain. He felt extremely guilty about it and almost never left his side since then. Sir, I heard that Miss Jiang from the Jiang family is spoiled and unruly, domineering in the Jiang mansion, and often beats and scolds servants. Since learning about the engagement between the Meng and Jiang families, Song Zhu has long known the details of Miss Jiang from the Jiang family. A person as kind as an adult naturally needs to marry the best woman in the world. How could they marry a woman like Jiang Sijin? If the Jiang family dares to send someone here like this, it must be the one in the Marquis' mansion who caused trouble. It's better for the adults to quickly write a divorce letter and send the person away. After Song Zhu finished speaking and waited for a long time, there was no response from the person in the wheelchair. Your Excellency. Meng Huishuan frowned upon hearing the words and listened to the sound of rain outside. After a while, he pursed his thin lips and said, Bring people in. Sir. It's raining heavily outside. Even if we have to send people away, we'll wait until the rain stops. Song Zhu take them to the backyard to stay. Sir, where do we have any more money to rent another room? Song Zhu muttered. The money he brought with him this time was almost used up, and Meng Huishuan refused to stay at the official post office. After all, he only spent one or two silver to rent three rooms in the courtyard. Meng Huishuan pondered and said, then arrange for them to stay in my room. Song Zhu sighed and forgot that his own adult was a living bodhisattva. Forget it, it's fortunate that Uncle Wu is not here, so we can only sleep in the same room as Xiao Mohan. I'm just being wronged, a sentence suddenly floated down the beam, 
startling Song Zhu. It's my fault, you're still grinding your teeth while sleeping. Song Zhuzhong opened his umbrella and returned to the rain. Jiang Bai searched in the rain for a long time, almost soaking wet before waiting for the late arrival of Song Zhu. She had a gloomy face and was full of unhappiness. Our young lady has been waiting for almost half an hour. If we wait any longer, I'm afraid the sedan chair will be soaked through. Seeing Jiang Bai's domineering appearance, Song Zhu was even more determined in his heart. Even the little maid dared to throw a face like this. Miss Jiang doesn't know how angry she is. As soon as he thought of this, Song Zhu didn't even lift his eyelids. It's you who came by yourselves. Jiang Bai choked so much that she almost couldn't catch a breath. What are you saying? Song Zhu ignored Jiang Bai directly and walked to the sedan chair not far away. He said calmly, the alley is narrow and the sedan chair cannot pass through. Please ask Miss Jiang to come down and walk on her own. Are you coming down and walking on your own? Jiang Bai was ignored by Song Zhu, and her heart was already filled with anger. Now that she heard Song Zhu being so arrogant, she couldn't bear it anymore. They were all servants. If she didn't give Song Zhu a thumbs up today, she wouldn't be ridden by him in the future. Our Miss Jin Ji Yu Yi has traveled a thousand miles to come here. Even if Lord Meng doesn't come to pick her up, she still allows us Miss to leave on our own. Jiang Bai reached out her finger and almost poked Song Zhu's face. I tell you, our Jiang family is not easy to bully. Today, if you don't lift the sedan chair and welcome our young lady in, we will never enter the door. That's great. Song Zhu was overjoyed and turned around, ready to leave. Don't. A simple hand lifted the sedan curtain, and as soon as the red hood protruded, it quickly retracted. The rain is too heavy, please borrow an umbrella, young man. Jiang Bai's eyelids twitched, how could Miss fall so low? Miss, you mentioned earlier that you must have Lord Meng lift the sedan chair and personally pick you up. Otherwise, you will be relying on your official position to sell off and look down on us merchants' families. Jun Chi Chi is really annoying her, like a frog, constantly croaking. She didn't want to lose her temper in front of Song Zhu, so she could only maintain a calm and graceful posture, ignoring Jiang Bai. Jiang Bai was ignored one after another, her anger accumulating in her chest like a rapidly exploding toad. Song Zhu didn't know what medicine Miss Jiang was selling in her gourd. Although he wished the master and servant could turn around and leave, he always listened to Meng Huishuan's words and quickly handed an umbrella in. I thought Miss Jiang from the Jiang family would have to fiddle a bit, but to my surprise, she grabbed her skirt with an umbrella and ran away. Before Song Zhu could react, she was almost nowhere to be seen. Fortunately, Jun Chi Chi still had a trace of rationality, standing in front of the screen wall pretending to be shy and waiting for Song Zhu. Where is Meng Lang? What? Who? Song Zhu was so frightened by her Meng Lang sound that he almost fell. It took a while to realize that Meng Lang was referring to his own adult. Your adult has already rested, Miss Jiang should go to the backyard first. Have you rested? How can that work? Are you seven or seven anxious and not following the rules to scatter? She twisted the veil with both hands, revealing her rosy lips. We must not bow down and get married first. Can we lift the veil and enter the bridal chamber? The most important thing is to enter the bridal chamber. The mournful voice drifted into the courtyard with the light rain. Cough cough. Suddenly, a suppressed cough came from the side room. Jun Chi Chi's foot, which was supposed to be poked out, has been retracted again. It's just that Meng Lang fell off the cliff this time and was not lightly injured. He has just recovered, and now his bridal chamber is afraid let's wait until Meng Lang is better. After all, the groom has the strength to handle the bridal chamber matter. Jun Chi Chi obediently put down the hood and picked up the hem of his skirt again. Little brother, lead the way ahead, he said the Ziyuan is a courtyard with two entrances and two exits. 
Initially, Song Zhu rented a total of three rooms, with Meng Huishuan and Uncle Wu living in the first entrance and the remaining one serving as a kitchen. Song Zhu lives in the second backyard. At first, he thought he was a bit far away from Meng Huishuan. Now, as soon as he sees it, he wants the master and servant to stay away from the adults. He sent the person into the house and turned around before leaving, looking very arrogant. He was so angry that Jiang Bai wished to tear him apart alive. Miss, what a terrible place. Jiang Bai frowned as she looked at the room, which was not as big as their Jiang family's firewood house. Jiang Bai thought of her own young lady's reaction earlier and became suspicious again. Miss, how could you just come out on your own? Isn't this embarrassing our Jiang family? What should we do? Jun Chichi had already lifted the lid and deftly took off his coat. Is it really difficult to go back? You don't want the ledger anymore. Speaking of the ledger, Jiang Billy calmed down for a moment and immediately changed her face. Miss, it's better to remain calm. When we get the ledger, we'll leave this damn place immediately. Jun Chichi was too lazy to pay attention to her, so he put down the tent and crawled in. I'm tired. I'll talk about anything tomorrow, he said Jiang Bai quickly stepped forward to help Jun Chichi tidy up the tent, with a smile on her face. Miss, rest well, she said when the tent was completely put down, Jiang Bai's mouth suddenly collapsed. Humph, when I got the ledger, I would be Miss Jiang. By then, let's see how proud you are. As Jiang Bai's footsteps faded away outside the tent, Jun Chichi suddenly opened his eyes. She knew that Jiang Bai was not a simple girl. She had a cunning and cunning demeanor all the way, and didn't know what tricks to play. However, she didn't care. She wasn't the real Miss Jiang, so she didn't bother with this idle mind. As soon as Jun Chichi thought about it, right now, Meng Huishuan was in the room less than a hundred steps away from her. Her heart couldn't help but jump uncontrollably. Jun Chichi unconsciously clenched her small fist. Today is the day when she and Meng Huishuan are celebrating. Even if she cannot have a wedding, she must see someone. Not only to see, but also to touch. Jun Chichi. Having a dream is amazing, end of this chapter. Chapter 3. Touching Meng Lang's Hand. You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Chapter 3 Touching Meng Lang's Hand Song Zhu said, Sir, Miss Jiang fell asleep as soon as she entered the room. The maid next to her was quite mischievous, wandering around the yard and even getting close to Mrs. Zhao in the kitchen. I don't know what she wanted to know. Hmm. Seeing Meng Huishuan's lackluster reaction, Song Zhu couldn't resist anymore. Like pouring beans out of a bamboo tube, he flipped Jiang Sijin upside down. Sir, I never mentioned before that Miss Jiang is not only arrogant and domineering, she, she. Song Zhu stomped his foot, she is also unclear with the guards at home. As soon as Song Zhu finished speaking, Meng Huishuan, who was in the wheelchair, didn't react much. Instead, a head stretched out from the beam of the room. Meng Huishuan didn't want to listen to Song Zhu's nagging anymore, indicating that Imo Han was interested and didn't stop him anymore. Song Zhu became even more enthusiastic as he had an audience. I heard that many people in the Jiang family bumped into Miss Jiang and the guard's intimate behavior. The two of them often had private meetings and had already made a lifelong commitment. They even made plans to elope together. Song Zhu was really angry, feeling that Miss Jiang's eyes were blind. How could a guard compare to Meng Huishuan? After Song Zhu finished speaking, Meng Huishuan slowly shook his wheelchair and headed towards the window. Since losing his sight, Meng Huishuan can no longer read the documents and is more willing to stay by the window. He took a light sniff, his face a bit strange for a moment, and silently reached out and groped to close the window. Song Zhu was a bit strange. He came forward to smell it and understood why Meng Huishuan looked like that. He was inexplicably amused and said, Why did Aunt Zhao act like a stinky Yuan again today? He pushed Meng Huishuan back to his desk and advised, Sir, 
it's better to see off Miss Jiang earlier. Just now, there was a gust of wind blowing, and Meng Huishuan couldn't help but cough a few more times. After taking a few sips of water and pressing it down, he slowly spoke up, Miss Jiang and I were supposed to be arranged by our parents. We have no feelings. Although Miss Jiang comes from a prestigious family, she doesn't even have the freedom to choose her husband. It's really pitiful. Cough cough. When the weather improves, I will write a divorce letter with her so that she can reunite with her beloved earlier. Song Zhu was a bit speechless for a moment. His own master was truly a living bodhisattva, no wonder every temple was hoping to accept him as the abbot. Meng Huishuan, who was seriously injured but not fully recovered, spoke so much at once. It was really exhausting and he couldn't help but cough suddenly. His face turned red and he bent down for a while, unable to straighten up. The beam moved lightly, and a figure fell. He hurriedly helped Meng Huishuan pour water. Song Zhu was very worried when he saw Meng Huishuan coughing like this. Sir, now that we have the account books, why don't we go back to the capital? No, it's not possible. Meng Huishuan struggled with discomfort and gasped for breath. We can't convict just by relying on the account books. We must, we must, and we must find other evidence. I have persisted until now, and I can't just let it go. But. Song Zhu looked at Meng Huishuan, who was injured all over, feeling really uncomfortable for him. But adults' eyes and legs need to be treated as soon as possible. All right, it's okay, Meng Huishuan said with a smile at the corner of his mouth. Uncle Wu said he would hire a divine doctor from the martial arts world. I'm sure he's already on his way. You and Imo Han are both tired today, so hurry back and rest. Seeing the two of them unwilling to leave, Meng Huishuan's expression became firm and he said, I'm really okay, go quickly. Song Zhu and Imo Han were used to listening to Meng Huishuan's words from childhood to adulthood, and they walked out of the room in front and back. Salt tax corruption in Huaiha River and Huaiha River reached 60 million tails of silver. Lu Bashi, the local supervisor of the county, ignored his own life and death and disclosed the secret. However, he was killed on his way back to Beijing, leaving only an orphan girl. This case shocked the whole country. Emperor Mingyan appointed Meng Huishuan as an imperial envoy and personally went to Yangzhou to investigate the case. Meng Huishuan lived up to expectations and finally obtained the account book left by Lu Baixi, but was assassinated by an assassin. Salt merchants colluded with the Salt Administration and colluded in collusion, while Gao Heng, the Salt Administration of the two Huai regions, was the nephew of the current Empress Dowager. But Emperor Mingyan, who insisted on thoroughly investigating this case, was not the biological son of the current Empress Dowager. Clear-eyed people can see that this is no longer a simple case of salt tax corruption, but a game of power between the Empress Dowager and the new Emperor. This hot potato, held up and down, only Meng Huishuan dared to pick it up and knock it to the end. The willow trees outside the window rustled and shed willow leaves. Jun Chichi lay on the tree, holding his cheeks in both hands, staring foolishly at the room, openly peeking, with a cheerful smile in his eyes that would accompany anyone who looked. Thinking of Meng Huishuan's previous experiences, I couldn't help but click twice. Her Meng Lang was truly a towering and upright man. Cough 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 cough. Until it was confirmed that Song Zhu had walked away from Mo Han, Meng Huishuan no longer suppressed himself and coughed fiercely. When he fell off the cliff, he not only injured his legs but also his lungs. His body is already riddled with wounds and holes, and he may not be able to gallop like before in this life. He had already had the intention to die, but before he died, he had to solve this salt tax corruption case for Emperor Mingyan, which could also be considered as the friendship between the two sides in the past. As for Song Zhu and Imo Han, he didn't want them to worry about him anymore, let alone feel any mercy from them towards him. Hmm. Meng Huishuan, although blind in both eyes, could still feel the changes in light and shadow. Suddenly, a shadow shrouded his eyes, 
and in the next moment, a cup of warm water was stuffed into Meng Huishuan's hand. Meng Huishuan thought it was Song Zhu who had gone and returned, how did he come back again? Warm water flowed into his internal organs, and Meng Huishuan's breath slowly stabilized. He handed out his cup and said, thank you very much. Song Zhu, didn't speak, just slowly reached out to take the cup, and his fingers inadvertently covered Meng Huishuan's hand before suddenly retracting. Without waiting for Meng Huishuan to doubt, the other party extended their index finger and gently touched it, with the fingertips pressed against them, fine and dense, without any gaps. Meng Huishuan What is Song Zhu going crazy about? He felt strange and withdrew his hand, placed the cup on his lap, looked up and asked, what's wrong? Unfortunately, this Song Zhu had no intention of answering. She tightly covered her mouth with both hands, afraid of making a sound, and excitedly bounced around the room. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! I touched Meng Lang's hand. Woo woo woo, how could Meng Lang look so beautiful even with his fingers? Meng Huishuan frowned. Why does Song Zhu seem to have something wrong? Meng Huishuan was already born with a jade-like face, exceptionally handsome. After being injured, although his body was thin, he did not lose his former charm. On the contrary, his pale complexion and somewhat messy hair added a hint of broken beauty to him, melting into the fine and misty rain of Jiangnan. Damn it, Wei Meng Lang even frowned and looked handsome. If Jun Chi Chi is a little cat, I'm afraid he's already lying in Meng Huishuan's arms, rolling and snoring. Damn it. She is not. Jun Chi Chi took a few deep breaths and, like a little squirrel, reached out his small paw and quickly took out the cup from Meng Huishuan's hand. He tiptoed and wrapped a blanket over Meng Huishuan's leg. Jun carefully laid it out and straightened it, stuffing the corners into the wheelchair until it was confirmed that Meng Huishuan's leg was tightly covered before standing up straight. She secretly let out a sigh in her heart. Although it was already early spring, it was cold and chilly, and Meng Lang's body was weak. How could he withstand the cold wind? Song Zhu was also very careless. Jun Chi Chi stared at Meng Huishuan's empty and lifeless eyes, feeling as if someone had gouged out a piece with a knife, and his heart was heartbroken. Fortunately, I'm here, Meng Lang believe me, I will definitely take good care of you and cure you. Feeling the scorching gaze of his predecessors, Meng Huishuan's spine suddenly froze in place. The person in front of him was definitely not Song Zhu. End of this chapter Chapter 4 Shame to Death You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Shame to death since Uncle Wu left, Meng Huishuan has been taking care of himself on weekdays. Song Zhu and Emo Han are both two children, and they are not very careful people. Even now, when it snowed before, Song Zhu has never covered Meng Huishuan with a blanket. You're not Song Zhu, who the hell are you? Meng Huishuan leaned back in the chair, his hand wrapped in his sleeve quietly touching the button next to the wheelchair. This wheelchair is specially made by Uncle Wu, pressing the button will send 10,000 arrows in unison. Meng Huishuan didn't wait to answer, but felt one hand covering his back. In the next moment, a continuous stream of internal energy flowed through his organs, clearing the knots inside him and calming the restlessness in his chest. Unconsciously, Meng Huishuan's body was covered in a thin layer of hot sweat. Since he was injured, he has been afraid of the cold, but no matter how much clothes he wears, he has never sweated. He didn't even realize that he missed the feeling of sweating so much. Meng Huishuan's stiff back slowly relaxed, but his heart was already in turmoil. He didn't feel any hostility towards this person. If he wanted to kill him, he could just enter the door and take action. Why wait until now? But if it's for the account book, why do you have to serve tea and water, cover yourself with a blanket, and lose internal strength? Meng Huishuan was deeply skeptical, hesitating whether or not to call someone. This person has deep internal strength, and what if Imo Han cannot defeat him? Meng Huishuan was restless in his heart, but Jun Chi Chi, who was standing behind him, 
almost burst into joy. She had no idea that her Meng Lang was busy thinking about how to deal with her. All she knew was that her dream Meng Lang was right in front of her, right in front of her. She could even smell the faint peachwood fragrance on Meng Huishuan's ink hair. If only she had the courage to if it's a bit bigger Jun Chi Chi placed his hand on Meng Huishuan's back, while the other hand inexplicably touched Meng Huishuan's shoulder. Hush. Going further down is Meng Huishuan's chest. Jun Chi Chi's heart is almost jumping out of nervousness. Before Jun Chi Chi could continue to make any progress, Meng Huishuan grabbed his hand on his shoulder. His heart skipped a beat, his wrists were slender and boneless, his skin was delicate and smooth, like a woman's hand. Jun Chi Chi stood still on the spot, staring straight at the overlapping hands of Meng Huishuan and himself, even forgetting to lose his internal strength. Whispering, Meng Lang touched someone's hand. He touched me. Shame to death, how could you touch the girl's hand so directly? Sir, have you rested yet? Suddenly, Song Zhu's voice came from outside the door, and Meng Huishuan's hand was empty. The person behind him disappeared like a gust of wind. A click came from the back window, and when it was confirmed that the person had really left, Meng Huishuan spoke up to let Song Zhu in. Before Uncle Wu left, Yen Zheng Gaoheng had colluded with many experts in the martial arts world. I'm afraid that person might be some kind of martial arts expert, and he came here for the sake of accounting. Meng Huishuan did not want to implicate Song Zhu, nor did he want them to worry. Since that person did not achieve his goal this time, he was afraid that he would come again next time. Sir, this is the white porridge that I specially ordered Aunt Chao to make. You can drink it while it's hot. Meng Huishuan nodded but didn't take any action. He just asked, Did you send the letter to Gong Sun? Farewell. Song Zhu suddenly lowered his voice. Sir, just now Mo Han noticed Miss Zhang's maid Jiang by sneaking out the door. Mo Han followed and found out that she had actually entered the back door of the Gao family. Jiang Bai stayed inside for almost half an hour without coming out. Let me tell you, they must have colluded with the dog official surnamed Gao. Song Zhu was filled with indignation, as he already felt that Miss Jiang was not worthy of Meng Huishuan. Now he seized the opportunity and didn't hurry to use it as a pretext. Sir, the rain has also stopped. Let them go quickly. Meng Huishuan pondered and said, I had a few encounters with Miss Jiang when I was young. In my impression, she was a pure and pure person. Although she was a bit arrogant and overbearing, she acted openly and honestly. This kind of secret collusion was not like her style. He asked Song Zhu in reverse, I remember you said that Miss Jiang had a secret affection for the guards, how could she be willing to marry obediently? Song Zhu scratched his head and said, I heard from Gong Sun that it seems that the Jiang family used some means to arrest her lover before she obediently got into the sedan chair. If that's the case, it makes sense. Meng Huishuan pursed his lips and said for a while, I'm afraid Miss Jiang is also being coerced. Her and the maid's purpose should be to keep the account books. It's better for her to get the account books smoothly so that she can both withdraw from the marriage and save her beloved. Song Zhu looked at the serious Meng Huishuan and felt that he was wrong. His master was not a living bodhisattva, but rather a living Buddha. The Buddha was reborn. He sighed and helplessly took out a ledger from his arms. Sir, this is our last fake one. Miss Lu accompanied us to copy it for a long time back then. Speaking of Miss Lu, Song Zhu sighed again. Lu Rouge was the orphan of Lord Lu Baishir and the only insider of the Lu family's extermination case. Meng Huishuan saved her and asked Uncle Wu to escort her back to the capital. It was precisely because they wanted to send Lu Rouge away that they exposed their identities and provoked pursuit. I don't know if Miss Lu and Uncle Wu have arrived in the capital or not. They should have let Miss Lu stay in the first place. Maybe the adults won't have any problems. Song Zhu muttered, he could see that Miss Lu was interested in Meng Huishuan and didn't want to leave at all, but his own adult didn't understand the charm and insisted on sending him away. 
There's no need to say more about this matter, Meng Huishuan collected the ledger and asked Song Zhu to copy another one to avoid others. After all, besides Miss Jiang, there is also that mysterious person who came up with the idea of this ledger. The mysterious person has profound martial arts skills, and I hope he can retreat once he obtains the account book. Meng Huishuan does not want anyone around him to be hurt by this matter again. Jun Chi Chi lay in bed for a while before hearing Jiang by sneak in the door. Where have you been? Although Jun Chi Chi didn't want to know what Jiang Bai was calculating, if she dared to plan on Meng Huishuan's head, she would definitely kill this turtle grandson. Oh, I'm just wandering around. Jiang Bai's eyes were a bit uneasy, and she quickly changed the topic. Miss, you don't even know how poor Mr. Meng is. He even shares a house with others. I heard there's a poor scholar living next to us who came to take the exam. Seeing that Jun Chi Chi didn't react much, Jiang Bai leaned forward again and said, Miss, when are you going to find Lord Meng? After all, something as important as an account book must be kept by Lord Meng personally. If we stay here all this time, we may not know when we will be able to get the account book. Jun Chi Chi hugged his arms and looked pale. How do I feel that you want to find the ledger more than I do? What? Finding the ledger is good for you. Ah. Jiang Bai's heart skipped a beat as she suddenly had the illusion that she had been completely seen through by the other party. She rolled her eyes and said, Miss, what are you saying? I'm thinking for Miss's sake. Miss, when she thinks about Yi Li, he's still waiting for Miss in the Jiang mansion. You know the master's methods, but Yi Li doesn't know how much he'll suffer. Nightly, Jun Chi Chi's face became a bit strange. Is it not a rumor that Miss Jiang and the guards are not clear? Damn it! How could she use Miss Jiang's identity to play friends with Meng Lang? End of this chapter. Chapter 5 What I want is you. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 5 What I Want Is You Jiang Bai saw that Jun Chi Chi's face was darkened, and she thought she had caught her sore spot. The Miss Jiang family was fearless, but unfortunately, this little guard was her biggest weakness. Jiang Bai took the opportunity to stir up trouble again and said, if we had received the account book a day earlier, we could have saved Yi Li a little earlier. Jun said seven or seven times and understood. Jiang Bai thought that if she moved out of Yili, her young lady would obediently submit and immediately went to find Meng Huishuan. Who would have thought that she not only remained motionless, but also stared at her hands all day, giggling and eating? Is this just the legendary illness of lovesickness? Jun Chi Chi, who is not sick, doesn't know. She only knows that she is absolutely right today. No. Wash your hands. These hands, but they have touched Meng Lang, and Meng Lang has also touched them. She recalled the feeling of her hand covering Meng Huishuan's back just now. Even through her clothes, Jun Chi Chi could clearly touch the beads on Meng Huishuan's spine. Hiss. Meng Lang is really thin as a girl from Sichuan, I absolutely cannot let my roof become thin. She needs to find a way to help Meng Lang make up for it properly. Meng Huishuan finally sent Song Zhu away, walked around the room for quite a while, and decided to hide the ledger in the drawer of his desk. A normal person would go straight to their desk as soon as they enter, and they can easily find it with just a small flip. Meng Huishuan is quite satisfied with this position, which can ensure that both Miss Jiang and the mysterious person can smoothly take this fake account book. He turned his wheelchair to the window, remembered the sound of the window frame just now, pulled out the silk thread to tie the bell, and then sat patiently at the table waiting. He just set the bell, but did not set a trap. In fact, he was afraid that if he didn't hit it, it would anger the mysterious person and implicate the innocent people in the courtyard. Meng Huishuan was like this, no matter what situation he went to, his first thought was the lives of others, but he rarely considered himself. Ringing Bells as soon as Jun Chi Chi jumped out of the window, she touched the silk thread. She knew it was Meng Huai who had announced to protect her, but she was not at all annoyed. 
Instead, she stared at Meng Huishuan in the wheelchair with obsession. My heart was filled with joy. Meng Lang and I were really smart, and we only managed to figure out my direction once. Meng Huishuan knew that the mysterious person had indeed flipped through the window again and said, Who the hell is your excellency? What is the purpose of coming here? Jun Chichi didn't speak, just put the tray in his hand on the table and stuffed the spoon into Meng Huishuan's hand, meaning, you eat. Meng Huishuan smelled the aroma of the food and felt very strange. What was this person doing with a spoon? Is it difficult to do so because you want to poison? Meng Huishuan couldn't guess the meaning of the mysterious person in front of him, but he didn't dare to refuse directly, fearing to provoke her. He put the spoon back on the table and said, I'm not hungry. Jun Chi Chi frowned. There was porridge on the table that Song Zhu had just brought in, but he didn't move a mouthful. Why not be hungry? So is this stupid Song Zhu. Ching Tiendi cooks porridge for Meng Lang normal people are tired of eating it, let alone we Meng Lang is still ill. Jun Chi Chi stuffed the spoon into Meng Huishuan's hand again, and this time pushed it. This time, the meaning is, you eat, you eat quickly. In Meng Huishuan's eyes, this pushing action meant that the food was definitely poisoned. He once heard Uncle Wu say that when people in the martial arts world force confessions, they often give people some vicious poison, making them unable to survive or die. Although he had the ambition to die, he was not a chopping board that could be slaughtered. Meng Huishuan calmly put the spoon back. What's going on? Jun Chi Chi is in a hurry, it's okay not to eat. Don't eat to recuperate. How to nourish your body. Don't take good care of yourself and build a bridal chamber. Meng Huishuan could only rely on light and shadow to judge. The mysterious person walked back and forth in front of him several times, and he guessed that it was because he had poisoned and forced the question to fail. He was thinking of another way. He was about to open his mouth and kindly remind the ledger to be on the desk, when he suddenly noticed that the figure was getting closer and closer. In a daze, there was a pain in his chest, and Meng Huishuan's heart skipped a beat. That person even tapped his own acupoint. Isn't he just a fish and meat on the chopping board, willing to be attacked by others? If you poison him, it's okay to poison him alone. There are so many innocent people outside. Ah ah ah. Meng Huishuan was still daydreaming. His mouth was opened by someone's hand, and a tablespoon of kanji was stuffed in. He could not help chewing it. The kanji was not the white porridge sent by Song Zhu. The kanji with shredded vegetables and meat was also mixed with ginger, which tasted good since he was ill, he had no appetite. Song Zhu followed the doctor's advice to eat light food. He sent him porridge almost every day. He could not eat it at all. But the kanji in his mouth. When he tasted it, he knew it was carefully cooked, but he could not eat the shredded ginger, so he must boil the shredded ginger into water and pour it into kanji. Although it was done by a mysterious person of unknown origin, Meng Huishuan had unknowingly eaten most of it. Jun Chi Chi feeds kanji and stares at the person opposite. Watching Meng Huishuan's soft tongue licking the spoon deftly, he rolled kanji into his mouth. The thin lips are slightly pale in color, and the corners of the mouth are slightly raised during chewing. The Adam's apple rolls up and down due to swallowing. Although it was a simple gesture, it made Jun Chi Chi's mouth dry and tongue dry. She couldn't help but swallow her saliva and didn't know how Meng Lang's lips would feel when touched by supernatural means, Jun Chi Chi's hand covered Meng Huishuan's lips disobediently. Truly soft and tender. Jun Chi Chi's index finger unconsciously wants to extend inward, what are you doing? Meng Huishuan was startled. He was originally eating well, but suddenly his lips were pinched by someone. Ah! I! Jun Chi Chi was also greatly frightened. She felt guilty and quickly explained, I! I saw something on your lips. As soon as she spoke, she regretted it, immortal slack. How can you speak in front of Meng Lang isn't it just exposed? 
Meng Huishuan had doubts in his heart, but he didn't expect that this mysterious person was really a woman. Throughout history, most women who have embarked on the path of assassins have had rough backgrounds. Meng Huishuan saw that she had no ill intentions towards her twice, and after careful consideration, he said, the ledger is on the table. Ledger. What kind of ledger? Jun Chichi was stunned and thought for a moment, then his eyes curved. The ledger held by Meng Huishuan is evidence of collusion between officials and merchants in the two Huai regions, and many forces are secretly eyeing it. I think Meng Huishuan regarded her as one of them, but unfortunately, what she wanted was not an account book, but a person. Jun Chichi crouched down and looked up, I don't want an account book. Meng Huishuan felt that the voice seemed somewhat familiar, but he couldn't bear to think too much at the moment. So what do you want? His voice was as cool as jade, and even when someone pressed him, there was no panic at all. After meeting for a long time without anyone answering, Meng Huishuan slightly turned his head and said, hmm. The fresh breeze outside the door stirred his robe, strands of hair falling on his lips. The lips that had just been rubbed by Jun Chichi still had a hint of rosy color, paired with the white veil tied to his eyes today, like a delicate jade-faced gentleman. Anyone who looks at it wants to, everyone wants to be ruthless and frivolous. Jun Chichi let out a sigh in his heart, and Meng Lang's, hmm, almost killed her. Sooner or later, she will surely ravage Meng Lang's lips. She took a few deep breaths with a determined and devout expression, I don't want the ledger, what I want is you. Ball ball, you. Play friends with me. End of this chapter. Chapter 6. Don't be impulsive. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 6 Don't be impulsive want him. Meng Huishuan sneered inwardly, afraid that what he wanted was his life. He knew that the Empress Dowager had been trying to use his life to threaten Emperor Mingyan, and had hired countless assassins, both openly and secretly. He was afraid that the one in front of him was also. He entered the palace at the age of five and became the attendant of Emperor Mingyan, accompanying him from the prince to the prince and then to the throne. The late emperor passed away early, and as a young emperor, the position of Emperor Mingyan was not secure. And he, Meng Huishuan, could be the fastest knife in the hands of Emperor Mingyan, but he could never be his weakness. Meng Huishuan tugged lightly at the corner of his mouth, his expression indifferent. I'm just a useless person, you can kill or cut me as you please. But if you want my life to threaten others, even if I die, I won't let you do it. Watching blood flow from the corner of Meng Huishuan's mouth, Jun Chichi finally realized that he wanted to bite his tongue and commit suicide. It's necessary to look like this. If you don't play, then don't play. Jun Chichi was scared to death, but she didn't dare to act rashly. Her mind turned and she quickly shouted, Oh my! You misunderstood me. Actually, I was a doctor brought by Uncle Wu to treat your illness. She reached out and released Meng Huishuan's acupoint, hesitating and hesitant like a child who had made a mistake. You, you must not harm yourself, she said Meng Huishuan casually lifted the back of his hand and wiped away the blood from the corners of his mouth. He had a tenacious and resolute nature, which was far beyond the imagination of ordinary people. Even though his tongue was still bleeding, he still refused Jun Chichi's request to apply medicine. Since you said it was a doctor invited by Uncle Wu, why didn't you show up openly and sneak in through the window instead? Jun Chichi is disheartened. My Meng Lang is really not easy to fool. She pretended to be shy and pinched for a while before agreeing to reveal the truth. Actually, I don't want to show anyone because I'm a bit ugly and don't want to see people outside. Meng Huishuan didn't expect this answer. He remembered that Uncle Wu had also mentioned earlier that the divine doctor usually lived in seclusion and probably had some hidden illness. He certainly knew how important appearance was to a woman, and for a moment he regretted it. Did his tone just now be too strong? Is the girl from Sichuan? Yes, yes. Jun Chichi saw that Meng Huishuan was wavering and acting more vigorously. Actually, since I was young, I have always been very insecure. 
When I was young, the villagers all surrounded me and called me ugly. As I grew up, many people would rather die of pain than let me see a doctor because they thought I looked ugly. I didn't mean to deceive you, did I? I was just, I was afraid that you would dislike me like the others because I looked ugly and didn't want to be treated. How could that be? Meng Huishuan really hated himself for being reckless just now. I'm blind and can't see anything. As soon as Meng Huishuan spoke out, he felt something was wrong. He said softly, I'm not saying that I don't mind because I can't see it. It's just that appearance is just about appearance. The girl has excellent medical skills and a kind heart, so we shouldn't be inferior because of her appearance. A person lives for a lifetime, a drop in the ocean, and after death, it turns into a wisp of dust and smoke. Why persist in expressing oneself? June Kikawai was aggrieved and said, I see that the little lady you married yesterday looks very beautiful. You must have said that to coax me, but in fact, you still like to be beautiful. Miss Jiang and I were ordered by our parents and did not get married. Please do not misunderstand, Mississippi. If one day I have someone I like, it will never be because of her beauty. Jun Chi-Chi's lips curled up involuntarily, truly worthy of being the joyful Meng Lang of Laozi. After Meng Huishuan finished speaking, he laughed at himself and said, It's just my body. I probably won't get married in this life. Jun Chi-Chi instinctively retorted, Nonsense, of course you will get married. Not only will they get married, but they will also enter the bridal chamber and give birth to babies. Hmm. Why is the girl a little excited? Cough cough. Jun Chi Chi was a bit uneasy. Don't worry, your injury may be difficult for others, but for me, it's just a piece of cake. This girl speaks the Sichuan Chongqing dialect of Sichuan, which makes people feel very happy inexplicably. Even Meng Huishuan unconsciously raised the corners of his mouth. Jun Chi Chi thought Meng Huishuan didn't believe it, so he patted his chest and said, For three months, after three months, I will definitely let you ride the capital like before. Riding horses in the capital. Meng Huishuan tilted his head and followed the swaying figure in front of him. Miss, have you seen me before? I've seen it before. Jun Chi Chi stood beside Meng Huishuan, staring at his profile with a hint of trance. She finally found out Meng Huishuan's identity back then, and as soon as she entered the capital, she encountered the opportunity to be released. Meng Huishuan achieved the third highest score and became the youngest top scorer in Balin. That day, with a clear sky spanning thousands of miles, he rode a tall horse, dressed in a red robe and silk flowers, exuding a majestic and heroic demeanor, which caused a sensation in the entire capital and also captured the heart of Jun Chi Chi. But now Meng Huishuan is disabled in both legs and blind in both eyes. He sits in a wheelchair all day long, trapped in a narrow area and engaged in animal trapping battles. Don't worry, as long as you cooperate well with the treatment from now on, your eyes and legs will be better. The woman's voice is cheerful and bright, like an ice watermelon in the scorching summer. Taking a bite, the juice overflows, and it is crispy and sweet. Meng Huishuan followed the light and could feel her stopping by his side, but his eyes were fixed on him, and he could vaguely smell the fragrant herbs on her body. You have accumulated cold in your body. The ginger kanji just dispelled the cold. Now you know my identity, and you can drink kanji with ease. Jun Chi Chi could not help but put the porridge bowl and spoon into Meng Huishuan's hands. There was really no reason to refuse this time, and Meng Huishuan lowered his head and slowly started eating. But while eating, he noticed that the person next to him was sitting in front of him at some point. With a light waist, my legs were lifted up by someone. You, he paused and suddenly looked up, Miss, what are you doing? Jun Chi Chi sat opposite Meng Huishuan, placing his legs on her own, and her hands kneaded up from Meng Huishuan's ankle inch by inch. This is Meng Lang's leg. Jun Chi Chi was happy in his heart, but his tone was serious. After your legs are injured, it is most taboo to stay in bed and not move. 
your legs need to be massaged every day to avoid atrophy. Today, I will help you massage them first, and then I can have people around you massage you regularly. Since it was for the purpose of treating the illness, Meng Huishuan didn't say much. Moreover, Jun Chi-Chi's strength was moderate, supplemented by internal energy to help him clear the blocked muscles and meridians. Slowly, Jun Chi-Chi took every inch and intensified, pressing on his calves was not enough, and his hands kept moving up along his knees, almost reaching between his legs. Meng Huishuan was taken aback for a moment. Just as he was about to speak up and stop, his hands withdrew again. Jun Chi-Chi kept going back and forth with malicious intent, watching Meng Huishuan's pale face slowly turn from a hint of blood to a fiery red sky. As Meng Huishuan was about to catch up with her, she put on a business-like demeanor and said, Meng Lang, don't misunderstand me. This leg massage is supposed to press both thighs and calves together, otherwise it will lead to long and short feet. These words blocked Meng Huishuan's doubts, and they all said so. If I say more, I will appear petty. Just. Meng Lang. This Lang character should be a woman's title for the person in her heart. I'm afraid it's not appropriate for the girl to call her that. Jun Chi Chi pretended to be dumbfounded and entrusted Chu Baba, I just think calling it that way would make me feel closer to you. If you don't think it's good, I won't call it. It's just that I grew up in the mountains, and since childhood, no one has taught me, and no one has ever been close to me. Meng Huishuan. Your own mouth, girl, if you want to call, please call. Yes. Meng Lang. Jun Chi Chi's face lit up with joy as he pressed harder. Meng Huishuan suddenly felt like she was being calculated by someone. It's just that, how could a poor girl growing up on the mountain know? It must be her own illusion. It's getting late, girl, why don't you go back early? Jun Chi Chi frowned, mm hmm. What's going on? Just after the massage, you're driving someone away. Dismantling the grinding and killing the donkey is not as fast as it is. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 How to Steal a Family Member. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 7 How to Steal a Family Member Jun Chi Chi certainly didn't want to miss such a good opportunity for intimate contact, but on second thought, that guy from the Styx River once said, This bridal chamber, the boy has strength. Meng Huishuan needs to be well nurtured to have strength. That's all for today, Jun Chi Chi obediently put Meng Huishuan's legs back in place. Meng Huishuan finally breathed a sigh of relief in his heart, but before he could finish, the wheelchair began to move. Jun Chi Chi pushed the wheelchair and leaned over Meng Huishuan's ear, speaking sweetly, Let's go rest together. The two of us. Meng Huishuan didn't know what she meant, so he had to hold on to the wheelchair tightly. I'll go by myself, girl. Please go back. Meng Lang, you despise me, Jun said with a flat mouth, No, it's not. Meng Huishuan was really hesitant to say, It's just that there's a difference between men and women. It's so late. Meng Lang, you're overthinking. Jun Chi Chi said with great righteousness, in the eyes of our doctors, there are no men or women at all. I just want to help you rest in bed, and you don't even want this. I know now, you must find me ugly. Meng Huishuan was defeated and reached out his hand as if accepting his fate. Then I'll trouble you, girl, he said with a tight wrist, in the next moment, Jun Chi Chi lifted Meng Huishuan horizontally. As soon as she was held in her arms, Jun Chi Chi felt a bit uncomfortable in her heart. Meng Huishuan had really lost a lot of weight, I'm afraid she wasn't as heavy as herself. Previously, Gao Hung, the salt administrator, obstructed the investigation, and later the Empress Dowager summoned a group of assassins to watch with great concern. The Marquis' mansion was also full of worries, and I really don't know how Meng Huishuan managed to survive with this broken body. It shouldn't be like this, her Meng Lang, the spirited top scorer Lang, shouldn't be like this. Jun Chi Chi involuntarily tightened his embrace and leaned tightly against Meng Huishuan. The hand caressing his back continuously transported internal energy into his body. 
Meng Huishuan naturally realized what had happened and felt ashamed and angry for a moment. Although he was shy and angry, he truly felt pity in this embrace. He heard a long sigh, and his heart suddenly felt a little sour. Don't worry, girl. I'm fine, I just don't have much appetite these days. Jun Chi-Chi's nose was sore, and even at this point, Meng Huishuan was still trying to comfort himself. She took a deep breath and placed Meng Huishuan on the bed. She pulled over the blanket and felt a bit embarrassed, saying, Actually, I just hugged you, which is also a diagnostic method. Being closer to each other will help me understand your body and treat you better. Meng Huishuan was stunned by these words, remembering that she had once said she was the closed-door disciple of the Medicine King, and that the Medicine King's healing methods were indeed miraculous. For a moment, she still had some faith and said, Are you serious? Looking at Meng Huishuan's foolish appearance, Jun Chi-Chi suppressed a smile and said, Of course it's true. How close should it be, like this? Meng Huishuan suddenly leaned forward and Jun Chi-Chi just looked up. Her soft lips brushed against her ears, and a tingling sensation surged from the soles of her feet to the sky. Jun Chi Chi suddenly became foolish. Yo 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 how can you steal someone's ear? What a private place the ears of a girl's family are. Jun Chi Chi held his hot cheeks and excitedly spun around in place, like a freshly boiled kettle, whimpering, his whole head emitting heat. Leaving behind a sentence, I'll come find you again tomorrow, fled in despair. Ah! Meng Huishuan heard the sound of the window and knew that someone had left. He was a little worried in his heart, afraid that this girl might not have a good brain. The sun and moon alternate, and the stars move with each passing moment. Jun Chi Chi was too excited last night and didn't fall asleep until midnight, but he was awakened early in the morning by Jiang Bai. Miss, if you don't go find Lord Meng again, when can we get the account book? Jun, looking outside, it's not even dawn and the chickens haven't crowed. However, due to Jiang Bai's relentless urging, she also wanted to persuade Meng Huishuan. She simply stood up, put on yesterday's fiery wedding dress, and walked out. The mornings in Jiangnan are usually foggy, and Mo Hanben enjoyed it very much. However, he picked up the thin mist with a sword flower and saw a bright red ghost approaching him step by step not far away. Unfortunately, that ghostly figure wasn't meant to walk, it was meant to jump. Jumping Zombie M. O. Han was so frightened that his whole body was covered in hair, and he hugged his sword and disappeared with a swoosh. There's a ghost. Song Zhu Gang poured a glass of water and was almost scared by the elusive M. O. Han, causing him to spill it out. What kind of ghost is there? You look like a ghost like this. Shama Hanwei succumbed to death and said, There's really a ghost, the female ghost in red, I saw it with my own eyes. It's in the backyard. I'm not a female ghost, I'm Jiang Sijin, the newly married wife of your adults. Jun Chi Chi, somewhat disdainful, arched Mo Han, who was restless, aside. Your martial arts are pretty good, why are you so timid? A real chicken is embarrassing. You, you, you're so cowardly. Mo shivered and flashed onto the beam, saying there was a ghost. Song Zhu saw that Xiao Mohan was being bullied and couldn't bear it anymore. Hey, Miss Jiang, what are you doing wearing a red dress and wandering around this morning? Jun Chi Chi ignored him and took the tea cup from his hand and drank it all in one gulp. After finishing, he even gave a few clicks and said, it's a bit cold. This time, the portrayal of Miss Jiang's spoiled character was vividly portrayed, even Jun Chi Chi himself felt a bit proud. Song Zhu tugged at the corner of his mouth, rumored that he would not be deceived. Miss Jiang from the Jiang family is indeed like this. Meng Huishuan, who was behind a few people, tilted his ears slightly. Miss Jiang's voice. 
seemed somewhat familiar. It seems that with her voice thinking of yesterday, he couldn't help but feel a bit dazed by its embrace. But soon he denied it again, how could it be? Miss Jiang doesn't even know martial arts. Jun Chi-Chi has been secretly paying attention to Meng Huishuan's expression. When she spoke, she deliberately raised her voice, afraid that he would hear her. That's great, his complexion has improved a bit today. It seems that he hasn't lost his internal strength in vain. Upon seeing Meng Huishuan, Jun Chi-71 couldn't help but pounce and said, Meng. Who would have thought that before the word Lang could be spoken, it was mercilessly blocked by Song Zhu. He stood between the two, his hands spread out, like a candlestick filled with candles. Meng Huishuan said slowly behind him, Miss Jiang, wait a moment. I will write a divorce letter and make it clear to my family that I voluntarily withdrew from the marriage and have no relationship with Miss Jiang. No way. Jun Chi Chi was so anxious that he jumped up all over. We can't get married. Song Zhu sneered, Miss Jiang has already had a crush on her, why bother pretending to be affectionate here? Do you have a sense of belonging? Jun Chi Chi's face twisted slightly for a moment. Jiang Sijin's foolish actions seemed to be known to everyone. She pursed her lips and said, I have a connection in my heart, but I have always belonged to your family. Miss Jiang, don't deceive anyone. You and the Jiang family guards. Song Zhu, shut up. Meng Huishuan intervened, don't talk nonsense about these rumors, they will damage Miss Jiang's reputation. Jun Chi Chi couldn't help but raise the corners of her mouth. Her Meng Lang is truly a righteous gentleman, and at such times, she still wants to protect Jiang Sijin's reputation. She wriggled and said, Husband, don't listen to any nonsense outside. From childhood to adulthood, I have loved you alone. Meng Huishuan said coldly, We haven't gotten married yet, it's not appropriate to call ourselves husband. What's that called? Huai Xian. Brother Xian. Or. Jun Chi Chi deliberately lengthened his voice, Meng Lang. End of this chapter. Chapter 8. I love you at first sight. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 8. I love you at first sight with this sound from Meng Lang, for some reason, Meng Huishuan remembered the woman from yesterday, as if he didn't know her name yet. He didn't even realize that he could tolerate her calling him Meng Lang, but he couldn't tolerate Jiang Sijin in front of him. Let's call me Huishuan, he said humph, I didn't even let me call Meng Lang. At the time of July 1st, Jun didn't even know whether to eat his own jealousy. Brother Huishuan, I saw you at a banquet when I was very young, and I fell in love with you at first sight. Since then, I have decided to marry you and have children for you. No matter what you become now, I will never leave you. Jun expressed his true feelings seven or seven times, but he didn't expect Meng Huishuan to remain indifferent and heartless. When I was a child, my emotions were unpredictable. Miss Jiang, please go back, he said, no, I'm not leaving. Since I married you today, I will be born under your Meng Huishuan, and die under the Meng family's ghost. Brother Huishuan, please let me stay and take care of you. Everyone in the entire capital knows that I married you. If you want to drive me away now, how can I be a good person? Whether you are a good person or not has nothing to do with us adults. Song Zhu was almost disgusted by Miss Jiang and pushed Jun Chi Chi out. Jun Chi Chi simply played tricks and grabbed the door frame with both hands, sticking out his buttocks and refusing to move. Men and women are different, and it's impossible for Song Zhu to really get started. He was so anxious beside him that he stared at him. Jun Chi Chi's eyes were even bigger than his, making Song Zhu lose his sanity and reach out to scratch his eyelids. Since Miss Jiang wants to stay so much, then let's stay. Song Zhu and Jun Chi Chi, who were still deadlocked at the door, suddenly heard Meng Huishuan let go and both looked up. Hmm. What's going on? Meng Lang was moved by my true feelings. Jun Chi Chi's face was full of excitement. He pulled open Song Zhu, who was still feeling silly, 
and with a sizzle, he ran to Meng Huishuan's side. With a smile on his face, he said, The weather is so nice today, should I push you out for a walk? Before Meng Huishuan could answer, Jun Qi Qi was about to leave with a wheelchair. Song Zhu finally realized that this woman wanted to snatch someone under his nose. Little Mohan. Do you still need to say? And Mohan flew down with his flying knife, his expression cold and stern. Let go, sir. What are you doing? If you were a young lady from a deep boudoir, you might have been scared by Mohan's sword intent, but Jun Chi Chi was not afraid at all. Instead, he welcomed her and said, Your adults asked me to stay and take care of you. If you don't listen to your elders, just cut me off. Xiao Mohan felt exhausted and turned to Song Zhu for help. Song Zhu Zheng was about to muster up his energy to argue with Jun Chi Chi, but was stopped by Meng Huishuan. Miss Jiang, please wait a moment. Meng Huishuan glanced at Song Zhu. Song Zhu, push me in. Jun Chi Chi reluctantly let go of her hand, but as soon as she thought about being able to go for a spring outing and lake tour with Meng Lang in a while, she was so happy that she couldn't help but jump around the door excitedly, getting a few cold looks from Mo Han. Sir, how could you agree to go out with her? Miss Jiang is clearly showing ill intentions, and approaching you may be for the sake of the ledger. So bring the ledger on the table. Song Zhu, who was still chattering incessantly, was taken aback for a moment. It turned out that the adult had this idea. If a lady from a wealthy family like Jiang Sijin can come to me without considering her face and make up stories that show deep affection for me, there must be only the ledger left. Meng Huishuan put the ledger in his arms, Miss Jiang must have thought it was my personal collection, so she wanted to invite me out alone. I simply let her do it, hoping she could get the ledger soon and meet her lover soon. Song Zhu and Mo Han watched as Jun Qi Qi proudly pushed Meng Huishuan out of the door. Both of them had expressions of concern, and it was a strange feeling, as if they were watching their own cabbage being attacked by someone. Hey, Xiao Mohan, are you saying that our adults are being attacked by cabbage or? Before he could finish speaking, Mo Han suddenly wielded his sword and flew up to the wall. It was empty and strange. He had just sensed that there seemed to be someone here he lowered his head to search again, but only saw a puddle of blood on the wall. It's still early in the day, and the doors of each house in the alley haven't opened yet. Occasionally, you can hear dogs barking and children laughing from the neighboring courtyard. Jun worked hard all the way, pushing Meng Huishuan to the slope by the small river before slowly stopping. The thin mist has slowly dissipated, and the layers of red leaves in the distance complement the emerald green river water. Everywhere are fragrant wild flowers, and the chirping of birds can be heard. Just such a beautiful scenery, Meng Huishuan couldn't see it. The early spring wind still carried a hint of coldness on his body. Jun Chi Chi immediately squatted down and tightened his outer robe for Meng Huishuan. Meng Huishuan instinctively wanted to hide behind, but on second thought, he was afraid that Miss Jiang was wearing fake clothes for him. Taking the opportunity to find the account book was true, he let Jun Chi Chi's heart wander and let it go. Upon seeing Meng Huishuan's rare refusal, Jun Chi Chi couldn't help but raise the corner of her mouth. She deliberately tied the strap slowly and pretended to accidentally touch Meng Huishuan's Adam's apple, taking advantage of the situation and taking advantage of it. Seeing that Meng Huishuan had not yet resisted, she simply pretended to be him and collected his clothes, rubbing his chest with both hands intentionally or unintentionally. At this moment, Meng Huishuan finally regained his composure. He deliberately revealed half of the ledger without a trace, thinking that the other party would take the opportunity to take it away. However, she was not interested at all. Her soft hand brushed over the ledger and caressed Meng Huishuan's chest. Meng Huishuan withdrew her hand and said, Jiang, Miss Jiang. Before he could finish speaking, he heard a sudden gust of wind in his ear, as if an arrow had pierced through the sky and headed straight towards his life gate, but suddenly stopped, inexplicably stopping abruptly. Meng Huishuan instinctively felt a hint of danger and said, Miss Jiang, what's wrong? It's okay, 
It's okay. Jun Chi Chi hurriedly checked Meng Huishuan's ears and found that he wasn't injured before feeling a little relieved. She comforted her a few words, there are some immature children throwing stones ahead. I'll go talk to them. This stone can't hurt anyone. Stone. Meng Huishuan was suspicious in his heart. The gust of wind just now was not something a child could throw out. Miss Jiang, should we go back? He turned to one side, only to find himself empty. Meng Huishuan guessed right, it's not like a child throwing stones. Jun Chi Chi held a long sword in one hand, his eyes sharp. He followed the sword and saw a young man covered in injuries. The young man had a gloomy expression, dressed in a black and red strong suit, with long black hair draped over his shoulders, wrapped in strings of silver hair accessories. Three small braids hang down beside each ear, adorned with shiny silver beads, making a faint jingling sound in the wind. His forehead was still adorned with a crescent-shaped headdress, which sounded an alarm in Jun Chi Chi's heart. She had seen his portrait before, and she recognized this crescent-shaped headdress and him. Immortal Board This young man is the little white-faced guard raised by Jiang Sijin in the mansion, her little lover, Yi Li. End of this chapter Chapter 9 Her little lover came knocking on her door. You are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio. Chapter 9 Her little lover came knocking on her door. Jun Chi Chi hurriedly ran forward and led the young man into the nearby alley. From his attire, Yi Li appears to be a member of the Miao ethnic group. Miao people are extremely pure and loyal to their emotions, never allowing their partners to have ulterior motives. It is said that if Miao people fall in love with someone, they will bewitch them. If the other person has a deep affection for them, this bewitch will bless them for a lifetime and prolong their life. But if the other party changes their mind, this insect will not hesitate to take their life. Jun Chi Chi secretly slandered, and I don't know if Jiang Sijin thinks his life is too long, and actually provoked the Miao people. She pulled Yi Li into the alley until it was too remote to be seen by others before stopping. She was gasping for breath as she was about to speak when Yi Li pressed her neck towards her arms. With a strong smell of blood, Jun Chi Chi quickly covered Yi Li's lips. Damn it! Damn it! What kind of bad habit is this? It's like biting people when it comes up. She covered Yi Li's lips and, as a gesture of defiance, controlled him. If you have anything, just say it, she said Yi Li blinked and frowned with a handsome face, feeling almost aggrieved as she cried out, Sister, why don't you wait for Yi Li even though we've agreed to elope together? It's your turn to blink your eyes this time. Jiang Sijin is really amazing. How could she really elope with this little guard? Yi Li lowered her eyes and looked desolate. I finally managed to get out of the Jiang mansion. I've been looking for you for a long time, but I didn't expect my sister to actually marry that useless person. He's not a useless person. Upon hearing someone say bad things about Meng Huishuan, Jun Chi Chi almost reflexively retorted. Yi Li stared blankly at Jun Chi Chi, feeling a bit puzzled as to why she had such a big reaction. Didn't you really dislike him before? The young man kept his head down, the breeze blowing through his hair, revealing a pair of crimson pupils. He clenched his fists and said, Have you changed your mind? I. Jun Chi Chi is really two heads tall. They all say that the Miao people are good at goo, and she is afraid that if she nods, Yi Li will immediately kill her with those terrifying long stick goo insects. Moreover, if her identity was exposed at this moment, she wouldn't be able to accompany Meng Huishuan. Jun Chi Chi shook his head decisively and said, Of course not. I did this all for the sake of the ledger. Only by obtaining the ledger can the Jiang family let us go, and we can really leave without any worries. Yi Li stared at Jun Chi Chi for a long time before murmuring softly, I'm not afraid of them. If it weren't for my sister's sake, I would have killed all of Jiang Mansion long ago. Jun Chi Chi. The whole family of butchers speaks so easily. What's the point of killing? Look at your injuries all over your body. 
Jun Chi Chi relaxed his hand and wanted to quickly send him away. Hurry up and find a place to treat your injuries. Don't come to me if your injuries are not good. Yi Li remained motionless, his crimson eyes fixed on Jun Chi Chi, like wild beasts in the jungle scrutinizing their prey. Jun Chi Chi felt a little uneasy when he saw him, and his tone also slowed down. What are you staring at me for? I'm also doing it for your own good. Only when I'm healed can I be well protected, right? Yes. Yi Li suddenly bent down and leaned his head towards Jun Chi Chi's hand. Seeing Jun Chi Chi not moving, he even arched her hand with his head. Jun Chi Chi tentatively reached out his hand and patted Yi Li's head. Seeing that Yi Li didn't resist, he rubbed heavily again. Not to mention, the round and round little head felt really good. Just like a little dog, it's quite cute. Jun Chi Chi couldn't help but envy Jiang Sijin a little. Anyway, this little guard is completely loyal to her. Since I am using someone else's identity, I must take good care of that young lover. Jun gritted his teeth and handed all his wallets to Yi Li, asking him to open an inn in the city to recuperate first. He repeatedly swore that he would definitely go and see him. After Jun Chi Chi finally managed to coax the person away, he thought that Meng Huishuan was still waiting for him and excitedly rubbed his hands. As soon as he took a step, he heard someone shouting not far away. Someone fell into the water. Come and save someone. Hurry up, hurry up. It's Mr. Meng from the courtyard. Meng Gongzi. Falling into the water. Damn it. Jun Chi Chi suddenly realized that the place where Meng Huishuan was just now was a slope, and it was difficult, her feet spun faster than her brain, and in an instant, she arrived at the riverbank. Indeed, Meng Huishuan fell into the water. Mo Han has already rescued the person. Jun Chi Chi blamed himself to death. Although this slope is not steep, there are dewdrops on the grass, and the wheelchair is very slippery on it. Surrounded by people, pointing and pointing at Meng Huishuan, it's a pity that a good young master is actually disabled. Yeah, the river is very shallow, even the little ones are not afraid, but Master Meng is both lame and blind, it's really pitiful. Jun Chi Chi finally knows why Meng Huishuan would rather sit in the room day by day than go out. Although these villagers are all kind-hearted and regretful for him, for a once proud son of heaven, these pitiful regrets are even more unbearable than taking his life. Meng Huishuan was wet all over, but he insisted on having Emo Han put him in a wheelchair. He has his stubbornness and pride, even in times of embarrassment, he is still the crown prince of the Marquis Mansion and the top scorer in the new imperial examination. Jun Chi Chi felt as if her chest was being fiercely squeezed by a big hand, making her unable to catch her breath. Brother Huishuan, are you okay? She walked beside Meng Huishuan at a loss, but was pushed away by Song Zhu. Miss Jiang, we cannot afford your concern. Song Zhu was really angry. He looked at Jiang Sijin and couldn't bear to see him everywhere. His eyes widened in anger and he said, it's not even the beginning of spring yet. Do you know how cold the river water is? Our adults are already in poor health. If it freezes, at least the Jiang family won't have any good fruit to eat. I. Jun Chi Chi felt extremely guilty in her heart. She hesitated and didn't know how to explain, I just. Cough, 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 it's okay with Song Zhu. Meng Huishuan gritted his teeth and endured the bone-chilling coldness. It's not her fault, Miss Jiang. I didn't have the strength to control the wheelchair properly. Miss Jiang just walked away to teach those children a lesson. Humph, who knows what she's doing. Can't we afford to provoke or hide? Miss Jiang won't want to approach us adults in the future. Song Zhu slammed the door shut and locked Jun Chi Chi outside the door. Mo Han held his sword and guarded the door, as if any mortal Jun Chi Chi dared to take a step forward, he was about to splatter blood three feet, Jun Chi Chi thought that Meng Huishuan needed to change his clothes, but he didn't dare to force himself. He decided to go to the kitchen to boil ginger soup, 
but when she carefully brought the ginger soup back, he was rejected by Song Zhu. Miss Zhang's ginger soup is unbearable for us adults. Who knows if there is anything else inside? This ginger soup is not poisonous. I just want to go inside and see him. Jun Chi Chi took a sip of it himself to make Song Zhu believe, but Song Zhu, as the name suggests, couldn't eat it when he rolled it. If Miss Jiang wants to see adults today, just step over the bodies of me and Imo Han. Damn it. That's really crooked. Jun Chi Chi suppressed his anger, turned around and left, but as soon as he left the yard door, the cat entered the backyard again. If you don't let me see you, will I not be able to see you? End of this chapter. Chapter 10. Tiered Clothes. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 10 Tiered Clothes Meng Huishuan forced himself to change his clothes, and even with such a simple gesture, he had to rest by the bedside for a while. A falling into the water really hurt his vitality. In a daze, suddenly the bell rang from the back window, and for some reason, Meng Huishuan's body, which had been tense all along, suddenly loosened. Meng Lang, how are you? Is there anything wrong? Jun Chi Chi jumped in and rushed straight to the bedside. Looking at Meng Huishuan's haggard appearance, he almost blamed himself to death. Dead Song Zhu didn't even know how to add a blanket to the bed. Jun Chi Chi was busy flipping through the blanket in the cabinet until the thick blanket surrounded Meng Huishuan before sitting by the bed. Have you had ginger soup yet? Are you still feeling cold? Upon hearing the familiar accent, Meng Huishuan's furrowed eyebrows relaxed a lot. He lifted his head from a pile of blankets and said, You haven't asked for your name yet. A good name. Jun Chi Chi has never been asked for his name so gently before. I am seventh in the school, just call me Xiao Chi. Miss Xiao Chi, how did you know I fell into the water? When you fell into the water, I happened to want to come find you. This is the ginger soup I made. Can you have some more? Meng Huishuan had already been poured a bowl of ginger soup by Song Zhu, but he didn't want to disappoint Jun Chi Chi's kindness and nodded. I'll feed you. Jun Chi Chi took a bowl and blew it carefully to cool down. Here, open your mouth. Meng Huishuan obediently opened his mouth and didn't say any extra words. Jun Chi Chi felt that Meng Huishuan was particularly obedient today, soft and sticky. She allowed her to knead and flatten it, and gradually, the feeding hand changed its position. You're dirty here, let me help you wipe it. With the help of wiping the corners of your mouth, Jun Chi Chi's hand touched Meng Huishuan's face again. It's really soft and tender, and it's also really hot, not good. Meng Lang has a fever. I'll just say it, how obedient it may be. Ren Wei and Ren touching. Meng Huishuan's body is now at the end of its strength, and it would be even worse if he had a fever. Unfortunately, Jun searched the room seven or seven times but couldn't find any fever-reducing medicine. She had to lay Meng Huishuan flat and said, You wait for me here obediently, I'll go by fever-reducing medicine and come back. Don't. Don't leave. Meng Huishuan was afraid he was confused, and his left hand tightly grasped Jun Chi Chi's wrist, murmuring, Don't leave. Don't leave. This pitiful expression almost melted Jun Chi Chi's heart. She held Meng Huishuan's hand and said, Don't worry, I won't leave. Jun Chi Chi bent down and leaned over, his forehead against his, and then touched his cheek. No, it was too hot. It's too late to drink medicine. She can use acupuncture and moxibustion to cool down. Jun Chi Chi started to take off Meng Huishuan's clothes. Although Meng Huishuan was burning and confused, he instinctively covered his collar and didn't let it move. Are you good? Don't take off your clothes. I'll give you acupuncture and moxibustion to cool down. Jun Chi Chi coaxed Meng Huishuan for a few words. Seeing Meng Huishuan still refused, he simply smashed his coat with one hand. The white robe suddenly shattered into pieces, and Jun Chi Chi's rationality still existed, knowing that he had left a pair of pants for Meng Huishuan. 
Jun Chi Chi saw a man's bare chest for the first time in bed, and she was afraid to pat her own bouncing chest. It's really frustrating. So excited to sprinkle. Although Meng Huishuan was a bit thin and weak, his skin was fair and he had broad shoulders and narrow waist. His abdominal muscles were faintly visible in his waist. Jun Chi Chi couldn't help but extend his index finger all the way down from his chin to his chest, touch a hammer. I don't know Meng Lang is running a fever. Jun Chi Chi restrained his mind, his gaze changed, and he took out a silver needle to start administering it. Meng Huishuan was burning in a daze, as if he was on a fireball. After burning for a while, the fireball slowly began to cool down, and he slowly regained consciousness. As soon as he woke up, he noticed that someone was wiping his body for him. If these hands touch me without a trace, they are soft and smooth, definitely not Song Zhu. Xiao Qi Meng Huishuan realized that he was now naked except for a pair of pants. His face turned red in an instant and his mind exploded. What are you doing? Seeing Meng Huishuan wake up, Jun Chi Chi breathed a sigh of relief. She used the back of her hand to stick to his forehead, which was really good. The fever had subsided. You just had a fever and sweated a lot. I'm helping you wipe your sweat, Jun Chi Chi said as he continued to move his hands down Meng Huishuan's chest. Meng Huishuan's breathing gradually became heavy, and finally, as Jun Chi Chi's hand was about to reach his waist, he grabbed it and said, the rest is up to me and myself. His hand completely fell on Jun Chi Chi's hand, and Jun Chi Chi stopped and looked at him foolishly. The joints were distinct, slender and fair, with a slight chill. This was Meng Lang's hand, and it was the first time Meng Lang had taken the initiative to hold her hand. Jun Chi Chi raised his hand and grabbed Meng Huishuan with his back, gently caressing him with his thumb, showing endless pity. The candlelight exploded with a loud bang. Meng Huishuan woke up from a dream and quickly pulled out his hand. A handkerchief soaked in water fell from the palms of the two of them, splashing water all over Jun's body. Meng Huishuan heard Jun Chi Chi exclaim in surprise and quickly asked, Xiao Qi, are you okay? I don't know. There's nothing to do, nothing to do. Jun Chi Chi neatly put away his handkerchief, intending to follow Meng Huishuan's wishes. However, he caught a glimpse of several water droplets on Meng Huishuan's chest, and his eyes rolled, changing his mind. She mischievously gently wiped away the water droplets on Meng Huishuan's chest with her fingers. The gentle touch of the woman's fingers made Meng Huishuan's breath suddenly suffocate. No, it's absolutely impossible to continue like this. However, Jun Chi Chi will accept it as soon as she sees the good. She knows her Meng Lang, who is someone who eats soft rather than hard. Meng Lang, to be honest, do you think I look ugly, that's why you're not willing to let me touch you? Sure enough, Meng Huishuan swallowed back the words he had already prepared to refuse, no. Although he spent a short time with Xiao Qi, he may feel that she is a good girl who is both ancient and understanding. Although he speaks a strong Sichuan Chongqing dialect, he is doing the gentlest thing. He just can't say these words. But he also couldn't say a heartless refusal, perhaps not even realizing it himself. He was greedy for the warmth and excitement brought by Xiao Qi, and he was greedy for the joy of this moment. Jun Chi Chi chuckled a few times in a muffled tone and said, then let me wipe it for you. You see how weak you are. If you don't let me wipe it, I'll assume that you despise me. Meng Huishuan had no choice but to let her go. Jun Chi Chi warmed his handkerchief and slowly wiped the area where the water droplets had just splashed. This water droplet spread upwards from his chest, and Jun Chi Chi leaned down as he rubbed it. The last drop of water droplet was on Meng Huishuan's Adam's apple. How could a man even have such a cute Adam's apple? She was reluctant to wipe it off, and her handkerchief was rubbing around her Adam's apple, but unfortunately she couldn't touch the droplet of water. The Adam's apple was already a bit sensitive, and Meng Huishuan felt itchy and his voice was hoarse. Miss Xiaoqi, how are you doing? As he spoke, his Adam's apple began to vibrate, 
causing Jun Chi Chi's palms to tingle and even his heart to tingle. No. Not yet. The woman's sweet and greasy breath sprayed all over his Adam's apple, and Meng Huishuan secretly exhaled, not turning her head, much like a little daughter. In law who was being bullied. Jun Chi Chi feels like he's flipping the river and the sea in his heart, why not, without stopping, taking advantage of today's bridal chamber, I cooked mature rice with Meng Lang in according to his temperament, I will definitely be responsible to her. Even if he were, at that time, she might have already had Meng Lang's cub in her belly. Don't dare me, I'll let your cub have someone else's surname. Jun Chi Chi secretly exerted force, and the curtains on both sides of the bed suddenly fell, tightly surrounding the two of them. Meng Huishuan keenly felt the changes in light and shadow, feeling a bit confused. Miss Xiaoqi, why did you turn off the light? End of this chapter